In the lead-up to the release of Guild Wars 2's third expansion, End of Dragons, ArenaNet told players that the strike missions they planned to release would be related very heavily to the story, so they didn't want to preview them for fear of spoiling players. As we progressed through the campaign of EOD, we did indeed get to experience a story version of each of the expansion's four strike missions, Aetherblade Hideout, Zune Light Jade Junkyard, Kynang Overlook, and Harvest Temple. We also learned that ArenaNet developed these strike missions from a top-down perspective, designing the more challenging instanced versions first, and then removing aspects to make them suitable as story encounters. Although some players are not satisfied with how the game's endgame PvE scene has shifted in favor of strikes over the traditional raids, I was pretty happy with what we got, and my guild clears them on a regular basis. But I still hold out hope that an elusive 8th raid wing is still yet to come and I believe that the team at ArenaNet wants to make it as much as we want to play it. So I started to think about how you could apply the strike mentality to designing a raid wing. That is, how could you design a raid wing that has multiple bosses and arenas in it that could also double as a story instance? And then it occurred to me that ArenaNet already did basically that in Season 4, with the creation of Foreigner as the final instance in Episode 1, Daybreak. To give a quick breakdown for those who may have forgotten, the Commander and Dragon's Watch head to Foreigner to rescue Taimi, who has been captured by Palawa Ignatius Joko, long may he be praised. The city is an ancient ruin with significance to the overall narrative as it's where Cormir awoke Abaddon back in Guild Wars 1. To get to Taimi, the Commander needs to navigate through various monsters awakened and branded before having a surprisingly high budget fight against Taimi herself, trapped inside her golem and slowly suffocating to death as her air supply is drained away. Let's start with the basics here. Foreigner is a very elaborate set piece that is never used again. While it may use various assets that can be utilized in other environments, this section of the map is only visited in this specific chapter. It's a gorgeous location with a lot of winding hallways and various branded and awakened props before turning into a large inquest portal hub. In comparison to the Heart of Thorns raid wings, Foreigner is certainly on par in its aesthetics. A lot of players like how visually impressive raid wings can be, and haven't been very happy with some strike missions, especially those in the Icebrood Saga, which don't have very interesting arena design at all. But a raid wing also needs bosses to fight, and places to fight them. While it's clear Foreigner was never designed as a raid wing, you can see clear areas that could be altered slightly to allow for epic boss encounters. The first one is actually right through the gate leading into the city, which reveals a large grassy courtyard before the bell sequence. If the ruins in the middle were to be removed and the terrain evened out, you could probably reuse this awakened canid from the gate itself as a boss blocking access into the rest of the wing. Or maybe you take a page from Slothosaur and have it be some giant Abaddon altered Iboga that has some dark ancient power about it. This kind of set piece only requires that the boss give the appearance of guarding the entrance and overall blocking your progression. The second boss could be the Awakened Abomination that you fight halfway through the dungeon. This is a required battle that culminates in a cutscene with the return of Bram and Rox. The arena itself isn't large, but that's because the designers were making this with the idea of it being a normal-sized abomination in a cramped environment. If it had been designed as a raid wing, this area could easily have been larger and featured more elaborate use of these awakened inquests as either bombs or adds or some other mechanic that needs to be worked around. The inspiration for a fight is there, and the location is at a clear halfway point inside the city. It has all the makings of being a perfect environment for a mid-wing raid boss. Finally, we get to the portal hub and the battle against Taimi's golem Scruffy. Honestly, I think this fight has everything you need as the beginning of a good raid boss. There's even these sequences at specific phases where you have to platform to these side areas and collect pickups to break the static orbs around Scruffy. Compared to the minigames on Zera, that's not really that out of place for a raid in Guild Wars 2. Overall though, the environment, the arena size, and the concept behind fighting a golem in an inquest lab is quite good as raid boss inspiration. This would actually have been a better implementation of the Awakened Inquest Golem you fight as a part of Korna's meta event. So now that we've established how a Season 4 story chapter could have been utilized as a raid wing, let's talk about the potential future of raids in Guild Wars 2. 
When I pitched this idea to some other players, it was pointed out that requiring a story instance to also double as a raid wing might be limiting on designers or create unnecessary constraints. It might also be difficult to hide the fact that you have three very clear boss arenas inside a story chapter that may only have one boss. I think these concerns are valid, but not entirely a cause for concern. Guild Wars 2 has a long history of using phasing technology and has innovated on that tech over the years. Props could be placed to mask the arena if needed and removed for the raid instance itself. In fact, the Raven Sanctum in Biora has a version for the story and three other variants with different props that are used for the strike bosses. Kining Overlook, Zunai J Junkyard, and Harvest Temple are all areas in the open world that were able to double effectively as boss arenas without appearing out of place and non-standard boss arenas have been used before, especially in Salvation Pass. Compare the cramped cavern of the Slothosaur in the Bandit Camp to the actual arena you fight Matthias in. And even in the example of Farinar, you have those three distinct boss areas that I talked about earlier that would only need slight alterations to be a raid arena. The Raven Sanctum could be used as a raid wing too, if you enlarge the areas used for the tests and redesign the maze slightly to accommodate. And of course, many of the raid wings we have already, such as Bastion of the Penitent, only have the four clear boss areas, but plenty of sections that invoke the traditional story chapters and their unique locations. Plenty of people in the community hold the belief that raids are dead, and if ArenaNet continued to invest time and money into creating fully unique maps and assets that would only be used for raids, then I definitely agree with the sentiment. It's long been known that raids have a small player population, and even developer Andrew Gray said in 2020 that the biggest challenge in creating more raids is the small audience they attract. However, in that same post on the forums, he also highlighted that there is a giant leap in difficulty between raids and other endgame content, and there isn't anything to help players work their way up. With the creation of strike missions in EOD and the introduction of Emboldened Mode in 2022, there's now more ways for players to learn how to get into challenging endgame content. I've been leading raid training since 2021, and have found many people that have used Emboldened Mode to step into Normal Mode and even Challenge Mode raids and strikes. So if ArenaNet used their design process from strikes, that being the recycling of environments and characters to create challenging group encounters, and then applied it to the creation of new raid wings, they may find it a more efficient and economic way of creating the content while also allowing players the same level of access into the mode that the dev team aimed for in End of Dragons. Of course, this doesn't touch on the other aspects of creating a boss fight, such as mechanics and rewards, but with the release of Old Lion's Court, we've seen them add a post-expansion boss fight with a challenge mode and unique rewards, including an infusion, that reuses a portion of Lion's Arch as the arena. I think ArenaNet is capable of designing raids in the same manner, it's just a question of whether or not they will. Either way, here's hoping we see the introduction of Wing 8, Kieran Peak in 2023. Here's hoping raiding in Guild Wars 2 isn't truly dead.